Greetings from ABC Acres. I'm Grant Shadden, and we're here in the greenhouse to think about springtime, to think about planting projects, and to talk about how permaculture is different than conventional agriculture in terms of fruit production. It could be nut production as well, but most people have fruit trees in their yards or go to you pick apple orchards, at least in this area of the country, uh, in the fall. And most of the time, if you're going to a commercial orchard, you're going to what's called a monoculture. It's where it's all apples or all cherries, at least around here. And there's some problems with that. A lot of pests can come in. They all have the same nutrient demand on the soil at the same times and disease can spread more easily through a monoculture. So in permaculture, we like to look at what nature does, take that as a lesson, and apply it to our agricultural environment. And so we plant a diversity not only of fruit trees, but then we also plant a diversity of things around the fruit trees that we'll get into. We call that a tree guild. And a guild is an assembly of plants that's working together to fill each unique function that strengthens the system and leads to greater productivity of our tree, but also greater stability and resiliency, reducing the need for external inputs. We don't need to spray for pest control or uh, to prevent diseases. And we build our own fertility on site right next to the tree and we'll get into that right now so first off we're going to have for our purposes an apple tree because like i said it's what we have around here in commercial orchards so we have our fruit tree and this is where we're getting the the bulk in terms of the weight of fruit the uh the calories that's why we're really putting our support species of our, the rest of our tree guild uh, in close proximity to our fruit tree. But it's the main focus of the guild. Now, fruit trees need fertility to be able to produce well. And instead of bringing in chemical-based nitrogen fertilizer, we're going to use plants to fix nitrogen from the air around us and put it into the soil right next to the root system. So we have our nitrogen fixer. And in permaculture, we like to stack functions, meaning we want to get more than just one use out of every plant or whatever else it is we're putting in our design. And so if we're going to plant something in a place and take up some space, why not make it something that's edible as well? Here in our area, we really like sea berry. It's a medicinal grade fruit, produces these berries, fixes nitrogen in the soil, and it's just a great addition to a tree guild. So we're getting multiple uses out of this plant. Next, we need more than just nitrogen to create healthy soils and so healthy trees. So we plant things that have deep tap roots and they go down deep in the subsoil and they mine those nutrients, pumping them up into the body of their plant. And then we can use that to cut and place as mulch around the base of our tree or just to let nature take its course. And so we like comfrey for that around here. You can cut it four or five times a season here and it'll keep coming back. And it has really dense nutrient loads in, in its leaves. And it creates some great soil for those fruit trees to thrive in. And the healthier we can make these trees, the more resistant they are to disease and pests as well. And the more nutritious the fruit is. So once again, we're getting several benefits. And again, stacking functions, comfrey is a plant that's also got great medicinal qualities for us as people. And it can be really beneficial for our livestock. So once again, many uses out of the same plant. Now, we also need our pollinators to come 
and pollinate those blossoms that are so lovely in the springtime to produce our fall fruit. So we plant pollinator attracting plants. And there's a lot of herbs and flowers that are great at this. And once again, we can get uses of cut flowers, of culinary or medicinal herbs, and there's a great range of herbs and flowers that you can plant depending on what you want. And we're also trying to invite in other types of insects, specifically predatory insects to pests. So we call those our insectary plants. We're providing habitat for predatory wasps and, uh, and other types to come in and do the work for us. Let nature take its course. Instead of us having to spray and do all the work, we'll invite them to do the work for us. And they're all too happy to. So another good variety for us around here is yarrow, which also is a dynamic accumulator and also has medicinal herbal benefits for us as people and for our livestock. And we also have what we call aromatic pest confusers. Now that's a mouthful, but really what we're saying is they give off these, these odors that confuses the insects and makes it more difficult for them to key in on the apple tree. And this again could be garlic, onions. There's some great perennial uh, types of uh, allium uh, onions that you can plant underneath and you can harvest a little bit and cook with them and they'll just fill back in. Uh, you can also use herbs like rue or tansy to aromatically confuse those pests and keep them guessing. Now, this isn't exclusive and the list of plants that I've given you is very brief and depending on your environment, they could be different. And there's other things we could add too. So a lot of it just depends on what you want, what, what end uses you have, but filling these basic needs are gonna be the guidelines that you wanna look at when you're planning your tree guilds. Partnering with nature, we're designing it and creating an abundant system with many yields, many uses, and it's something that's beautiful to look at as well. There's just so much life happening, so much vitality and health, not only going on in the soil and so in the fruit, but also just all the interactions between the insects and the birds coming in. And we're, we're creating a type of ecosystem that we lightly manage to our benefit and to the benefit of the environment around us. Now, to me, that sounds a lot better than getting out and spraying chemicals and having to wear a, a mask and a uh, almost hazmat suit. So when you're planning your, your garden projects, your orchard or landscaping projects, and you're thinking about fruit trees, I'd encourage you to look a little more into tree guilds. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching.